Hello, and welcome to the Goal Busters vlog, where we spend some time on video talking about things that, frankly, we're interested in. And this series is the Accidental Fundraiser, where we are talking with the Accidental Fundraiser himself, Jeff Hall, who is the director of Lowell Observatory, to ask him about his perspectives as someone who is a PhD in astronomy who has somehow become a fundraiser and get his perspectives on the world, the nonprofit world at large. I'm Alice Ferris. I'm the founder of Goldbusters. With me also is Jim Anderson, partner of Goldbusters, and essentially my work spouse for the last 15 years. And we're going to just have a quick little chat about fundraising, the COVID-19 edition. Da, da, da. <laughs> <laughs> so it seems like nowadays we're spending a lot of time, well, frankly, on Zoom like this, and a lot of time talking about what's your response to COVID-19. And I know, Jeff, I've had a lot of conversations with nonprofit executive directors about, should you even be asking at all during this time? What do you think? Absolutely, you should. And our de development team is scattered uh, all over Flagstaff right now working from home, although they've developed some very effective methods of, um, of communicating. Um, obviously, it's mostly by Zoom. Um, we do have one of the team who's fortunate to live in one of the staff residences here on the hill, so she can kind of get in and take care of things. And, and yes, we have maintained steady communications because the ship is still running. You know, you know, we're, a lot of our programs are shut down, but you know, we've been placed under enormous strain as so many people have by the reduced operations. And you know, the way to maintain engagement is to stay in touch with people. So by all means. Since you mentioned staying in touch with people, what have you found are messages that resonate with people? One of the general approaches that I always bring to this, which, which is, it seems you get much bigger gifts by not asking for them. Um, you know, we, we, we try to engage people in the mission first. And, and when I'm writing little thank yous on, on notes to people, I'll always phrase it like, thank you for your interest and support. And I'm careful to put interest first because they're, they're, they, they want to know about our mission and they want to be part of it. So after the, you know, we, our first decision was to close down our outreach programs which is a bitter pill to swallow because that's one of our major annual sources of revenue. We sent out a letter to a um, few thousand of our most loyal supporters, um, just talking to them about how we as an institution were responding to the crisis. Um, I actually included a, a picture I took as I was walking home that night. There was the completely empty visitor center lot with a white dusting of snow on it. And it was just dead. And, and it really choked me up a little bit because, you know, it should have been filled with cars and filled with, with kids streaming in to, to look at the universe through our telescopes. And that was sad to see. So we sort of, uh, you know, framed a letter to our, our donors around that and saying, you know, this is really unfortunate, but we haven't laid anybody off. Um, we are repurposing staff into other things. We're taking advantage of this. Um, as always, and perhaps now more than ever, you know, your support is critical to us. Um, but, you know, we all got to take care of ourselves too. So I didn't even make that explicit an ask. We kept it very implicit, but we've tried to send the message that if, if people need to take care of themselves first, do so, but then we really appreciate your support. I think that's really an important point, Jeff, because, you know, people know whether or not they have the capability to give. And I've, mm -hmm. I've, I taught salespeople for uh, over a decade, um, trained hundreds, if not thousands of them. And right. one of the things I always told them was you never say no for someone. And I, I think, unfortunately, that that is the case that some of our, our fundraising colleagues are, are assuming that somebody can't give and they don't want to put someone in an uncomfortable position. But I think as, as if you can let them know that it's okay not to give, then you're relieving that burden. You're, you're relieving any sense of guilt that they might otherwise feel. So you don't assume somebody can't help you. Um, you ask, but in these situations, make sure you're letting them know that um, it's okay if they don't. Right, and if you've established the relationship with the donor from an initial standpoint of, you know, when you, you sit down at lunch and maybe you want to discuss even a small, disc, uh, a small gift for some sort of project, um, and instead, you just end up answering 
astronomy questions for an hour because they're just peppering you with all these questions. And that's okay. And that's a totally good lunch. And you're, you put their, their interest and their engagement in your mission first. Then whether whatever you're asking for, they, they know you're not trying to make them feel uncomfortable and you're not going to be mad if they say no. It's just it, you've created a very good relationship that, that you can communicate honestly with them and, and lots of good things happen. In fact, we, got, we are still getting many gifts in response to that letter. That's great. One of the things that's kind of interesting about this time is that, you know, Jeff, as we mentioned, you're the accidental fundraiser. It's, you have a PhD in astronomy and (laughs) you had never intended to become a fundraiser for a nonprofit organization. You know, I I have this running joke going with my thesis advisor of long ago, every now and then I'll, after something else has come up, I'll drop him an email or something and say, now, here is another thing you skipped in your stellar atmospheres class. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Cool. But, you know, when you think about the fact that this is not what you went to school to do, okay. and, and yet you do a lot of fundraising. And as I've said before, you're really good at it. Um, so in this time, as you've been interacting with people, is there has there been that feeling of the, ooh, I'm not sure I should be asking people for money? Um, certainly not amongst our team. Um, so, you know, I think they are all very much on the same page. And, and you know, I mean, we have sort of a, a, a culture and a philosophy we apply. And then the, all credit for that goes to Lisa Actor, who's our wonderful, she, I mean, she is the professional fundraiser who actually knows what she's doing and um, has really got the team in a, in a comfortable space. And I think co- communicating very well with our donors. And, you know, one thing we've done um, is use this as an opportunity. Um, we, for a couple of years now, we've been saying we really need to increase our online presence, but, you know, we haven't been able to do it because there's only 36 hours in a day, right? So, um, so now this enforced reset, we've, we've actually had the time to step back and working with our communications team, launch some neat, um, online content, different series, just like you have a series going here. In five weeks, we're up over 150,000 touches, you know, and so this is, this is a way to stay in touch with our donors. At the end of the shows, we'll be answering questions on the chat feed, and it's like, oh, hi, Jim, hi, Kent, hi, <laughs> yeah, a lot of familiar names. So, so we're, we're staying in touch with them that way, and, and you know, that is a form of fundraising. You're, you're staying in touch with the people who have chosen to engage with you. Jeff, I guess one last question for this edition. There's a lot of well-intentioned board members, executive directors, CEOs at other organizations. And it looks like um, Lowell has it figured out with your leadership. But what would you, what advice would you give another fundraiser who might be facing that situation where one of those people, board members or, or otherwise, um, say that we should just stop fundraising and hunker down and wait this out? Oh, um, I sure wouldn't do that. Um, you know, if you go radio silent, um, I mean, you, your donors, they're, they're people. They're stuck in their homes like the rest of us. They've got kids at home from school. They're feeling all the stresses that everybody else is feeling. And all of a sudden, this institution that they've chosen to support, perhaps with their interest in their treasure, goes radio silent on them. That doesn't seem like a good strategy. Um, or it doesn't. It also doesn't seem very kind. Well, thanks, Jeff, for your time once again for this <laughs> short edition of the Accidental Fundraiser with Goldbusters. And uh, we'll have more opportunities in the future to talk with Jeff about other topics that hopefully are not related to the coronavirus. <laughs> yeah, we get a lot of that these days, so I'll look forward to the next one on something a little more upbeat. <laughs> Wonderful. And hopefully we'll be able to shoot some of these in the future on the Lowell Observatory campus. I suspect we will. <laughs> Wonderful. So thanks, Jeff. Thanks, Jim. Thanks to you for watching, and we'll see you next time. <laughs>